The Philippine Sea shimmered under the sun, a vast expanse of deep blue. The USS Ronald Reagan, symbol of American naval power, cut through the waves. Suddenly, a dark shape surfaced, alarmingly close. A Chinese UN-class submarine, red star clear on its sail. Less than a thousand yards from the American supercarrier. The American response? Calm, measured, almost prepared. The submarine, meant to intimidate, now sat exposed and vulnerable. The game had only just begun. On the bridge of the USS Ronald Reagan, there was no shouting, no panic. The captain's orders were quiet, deliberate. The crew responded with practiced calm. This was just another scenario they drilled for. The ship's communications relayed unidentified submarine contact, bearing 090, range 1,000 yards. Instantly, the entire strike group was aware. Destroyers and cruisers adjusted posture, ready but restrained. Their orders, watch, listen, learn, not engage. The American response was about control, not escalation. The calm was a message, we are not intimidated. The Chinese submarine surfaced with drama, expecting chaos, but found only the hum of a well-oiled machine. To the Americans, this was an intelligence opportunity, not a crisis. The lack of drama was itself a show of strength. The US Navy knew something the submarine's captain did not. The submarine had not slipped past undetected. It had been tracked for hours. The surprise was not on the American side. The Chinese crew realized their presence was not a shock. The Americans were not reacting to a threat, they were processing new information. The real power was in their discipline. The US Navy's confidence was unshakable. The Chinese captain's gambit had failed to rattle them. The Americans had already won the first round. The Chinese captain believed he'd achieved the impossible, moving undetected. He was wrong. The hunt began with a faint anomaly picked up by a US destroyer's sonar. A subtle mechanical noise, out of place in the ocean's rhythm. The destroyer relayed the contact, the strike group coordinated. MH-60R Seahawk helicopters, expert sub-hunters, took to the air. Their dipping sonars probed the depths, working in teams, triangulating the submarine's position. The Americans built a detailed picture of the submarine's location, speed, and direction. All while the Chinese crew believed they were invisible. The US Navy created an invisible cage, tracking every move. They could have forced the submarine to surface or attacked, but they didn't. The goal was to monitor, not destroy. The US let the submarine get close, playing a longer game. Every move was recorded sound signature, tactics, vulnerabilities. The submarine's surfacing was not a surprise. It was the end of a hunt. The Americans had been in control the entire time. The Chinese captain's illusion of stealth was shattered. The real lesson, the hunter, had become the hunted. The USS Ronald Reagan never sails alone. It's the centerpiece of a carrier strike group a fortress at sea. Defense begins with distance. The group controls a vast ocean area, tracking everything that enters. E-2D Hawkeye aircraft scan for threats, while cruisers and destroyers form a wall of steel and firepower. The Aegis combat system can track and engage hundreds of targets at once. Any missile or aircraft threat is intercepted long before reaching the carrier. But the hardest threat is from below submarines. Here, the defense becomes a cat and mouse game, Destroyers, cruisers, helicopters, and P-8 Poseidon aircraft work together, creating a seamless web of sensors. Sono buoys, dipping sonar, and real-time data sharing make the ocean transparent to the strike group. The Chinese submarine didn't slip through a gap. It was allowed in. The US Navy was confident it could neutralize the threat at any moment. The submarine was not a wolf among sheep, but a mouse in a maze. The Americans were always watching. The Chinese captain thought surfacing was a show of power. In reality, it was a confession of failure. A submarine's strength is invisibility. Surfacing gives up that advantage. The act was likely not planned. It was forced. The crew realized they were being tracked, boxed in by helicopters and sonar. Running low on battery or air, the captain had no choice. Surfacing was an admission. The game was over. For a submarine crew, being forced to surface is defeat. The dramatic appearance was a desperate attempt to save face. To American observers, the truth was obvious. This was not a predator, but a cornered animal. 
the captain's only option was to surface and hope to turn failure into propaganda. But the Americans saw through the gesture. The submarine had been outmaneuvered and exposed. The real story was one of defeat, not bravado. The lesson stealth lost is mission lost. Once the Chinese submarine surfaced, it became an open book. U.S. Navy intelligence moved fast. Cameras documented every detail. The hull, sail, antennas, everything was photographed. Electronic warfare teams listened in, capturing the submarine's radar and communication signals. These signals are fingerprints, making future detection easier. The submarine's acoustic signature was also recorded. Even on the surface, its machinery made unique sounds, all added to the Navy's database. The incident provided a complete intelligence package, visual, electronic, and acoustic data. The U.S. could now refine tactics and technology for hunting UN-class submarines. The Chinese captain's attempt to intimidate had backfired. He'd handed the U.S. Navy a treasure trove of secrets. The submarine was now less stealthy, less mysterious. The Americans gained a long-term advantage. The real victory was in the intelligence gathered. This wasn't the first cat-and-mouse game between U.S. and Chinese navies. In 2006, a Chinese submarine surfaced undetected near the USS Kitty Hawk, a genuine shock. That incident exposed vulnerabilities and spurred massive U.S. investment in anti-submarine warfare. New sensors, better helicopters, and advanced tactics followed. By 2015, the USS Ronald Reagan was shadowed by a Chinese sub, but this time, the U.S. tracked it successfully. Each encounter is a test of skill and technology. China tries to get close. The U.S. tries to detect and track. The pattern shows a learning curve. The 2006 event was a Chinese success, 2015, an American one. The latest Philippine Sea incident was a clear U.S. victory. The U.S. Navy detected, tracked, and controlled the situation with calm professionalism. These encounters shape the balance of power in the Pacific. Each side learns, adapts, and prepares for the next round. The Americans have shown they can turn a potential threat into an intelligence windfall. The game beneath the waves continues, but the U.S. Navy has learned its lessons well. The Chinese submarine submerged and slipped away. The U.S. Navy let it go. No confrontation, no shots fired. The fleet resumed its mission, but a powerful lesson had been delivered. The American response was a quiet victory intelligence over intimidation. The drama of the surfacing was fleeting. The intelligence gained will last for years. This incident highlights a difference in philosophy. One side sought drama, the other, discipline. The U.S. Navy's confidence came from training, technology, and strategy. The real battle is won with information, not bold gestures. Forcing an opponent to reveal their secrets is a victory in itself. The submarine captain wrote a headline. The U.S. Navy wrote a textbook. The choice between drama and discipline is the choice between a short-term thrill and a long-term win. In the silent world of naval warfare, patience and intelligence always prevail. The Americans left the encounter stronger, wiser, and ready for whatever comes next.